Well, thank you, Robert, and uh, uh, thank you everybody for uh, the, the stamina so far. I can see 60 people online, and uh, that is uh, it's quite some training in uh, uh, having meetings online these days. Um, so, uh, well, and also thanks to all the uh, speakers uh, before me. Uh, they made my task very easy. I, I can say, first of all, that I agree with uh, the general conversation we have had so far. And uh, I'd like to take this uh, five minutes uh, as, a, as a chance to stick my neck out, uh, or shall we say once again, uh, and, and risk to be totally wrong uh, when we meet maybe next year or in a couple of years. Um, so let me uh, do that by um, stepping back. Uh, is 2016 uh, and I'm going around uh, in Brussels trying to convince people that uh, we need to do something about the ethics of AI. Uh, I wish I could tell you all the gossip, uh, not for today, but it will be in the biography. So uh, <laughs> uh, the number of people who uh, told me that that was not an issue, that was uh, not interesting, that uh, I was wasting their time is remarkable. I have their names, uh, I will not forget. Uh, in 2017, however, I finally met Michelangelo. We had a meeting in Brussels for something else. It was mostly about GDPR, um, uh, European Data Protection Regulator, uh, and so on. And Michelangelo said, well, I like this project. So uh, we started working on it. And, and you know, four um, years later, here we are uh, uh, discussing most pressing, uh, most important issues at the European level, where is the right level at which to discuss them in a regulatory framework that no matter how soft, nice, gentle, et cetera, is essential. And I have to say, I am enormously uh, impressed by the work that has been done. I followed the, um, the project for the first year. Uh, I chaired, you know, as you were, the, the startup. Uh, and I was uh, delighted to see uh, the project continue uh, along the line that you, you have sketched before. Um, why am I telling you a little bit of this and tantalizing uh, sort of uh, gossip, which I cannot share? Um, well, because I think that what philosophers are good at is uh, scouting. Uh, recona reconnaissance. I mean, just going and get lost uh, in 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 the wild. Um, so I thought, okay, well, I think there's uh, the, the project is launched, and it's time for me to to do something uh, more helpful, uh, and therefore start nosing around about what is coming next. Uh, and here is uh, no my uh, by now four minutes contribution. Um, what might be coming next to uh, our, our way? I think there are clear signs uh, here and there of um, uh, obvious trends. And these are obvious for anyone on, the, on this call. Uh, I'm talking to the people who are not on this particular meeting. Uh, um, how AI is being used, um, where and how? Well, I think it's quite obvious that now it's local realities, local governments that are actually using it, developing it, implementing it. The example I have in mind is very European. Helsinki Amsterdam uh, launched, I think in November, yes, this month or, or so. Uh, they open uh, registers for AI. Uh, I think they have about seven projects already online and they are very simple. I mean, they concern uh, uh, libraries, parking, um, road uh, works and so on. And citizens can go check, see the data that have been used for these particular AI services, comment on the value of these services and so on. The interesting thing is for the philosopher is um, not only to see this happening as AI as a normal reality, but also when you check the ethics that has been uh, adopted here, uh, virtually uh, bypassing everything we did. AI is just treated as a, a local um, uh, service and goes under the regulation of uh, business as usual. I'm not endorsing this approach, I'm just saying we need to look where AI is actually being used and see whether that is the direction of traveling that we thought was uh, going to be and whether that is the direction of traveling we like. Still about how AI is being used, so not only local governments making the real difference, uh, and here you know, uh, previous speakers have already mentioned quite significantly procurement, uh, that is a major force uh, that will make a difference. AI as a service. Um, I know that we are all used, again, uh, critically in our group to see newspapers representing AI as a robot is almost inevitable. You need a picture. <laughs> and therefore, here comes you know, the hand and uh, you know, little clunky thing. 99% of the AI we're talking about is software, uh, as we know. AI as a service comes with X as a service. 
So most of uh, what we are discussing today is uh, the ethics of AI, is uh, uh, the kind of AI that comes with a click, that comes to your computer to do this and that. And it's provided by the usual suspects. So we should look into AI as a service and ethics as a service, which is being developed as we speak. Around here, and I'm coming to the end of my uh, little introduction, is uh, again, scouting and nosing around. So what comes next? I'm sure that, uh, again, in this group, this is no news, um, but it might be for people outside this school. Um, the next wave, which I've been uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, stressing now for, for some time, is um, uh, auditing. Uh, we know that. Uh, I think uh, Lucilla made that point quite clear. We have moved, if I may be very schematic, from principle to practices, to requirements, to standards, and guess what happens next? Someone takes that as a business. So I'm personally, at the moment, interacting with some major companies, for example, that need some advice on how do we implement methodology to do auditing of AI as a service once either soft regulations or hard regulations are coming to play so that I can be not, not only a good citizen, but also make a lot of money because I am the one who's done doing the auditing for the Google, the Microsoft, etc. of the world. So uh, watch that space because auditing, it seems to me, and that's where I'm sticking my neck out, uh, is coming our way and is something where if I could convince Michelangelo once again from scratch, say, where would you like to put all your money? red or blue, black or the seven, or something like a roulette, I would say, Michelangelo, please, can we do another no, AI for people now on auditing? Who is doing it? What methodology are being developed? Why there's so much interest? And how we can do that properly? To conclude, uh, why all this? What's the perspective? Um, when we read AI, we normally read that as artificial intelligence, which is, of course, that's the right way of reading it. But I like to read the A in AI as agency. AI is mostly, again, about powerful agency on tap to solve problems. That's why it's becoming a service. That's the ethics and so on. If you look at that sort of massive transformation technologically from a new forms of agency perspective, we are much less worried about the intelligence or lack thereof. That's not really the point. The point is how you steer, deploy, and regulate that new form of agency to the benefit of society and the planet. So here, again, democracy has been uh, already mentioned, and uh, I think that is a crucial point. Is AI a force for good when it comes to society? And is it a force for good when it comes to the environment? We're just finishing a report, uh, which uh, will be public pretty soon on AI, for climate change. That is where AI can be hugely beneficial, but also risky. Because at the end of the day, it is electricity, my dear, all the way down. So uh, it does consume uh, while it saves the world. Now, I stop here because I hope that I've given you some kind of glimpses of what this scout uh, lost in the, <laughs> in the forest thinks uh, is coming our way. Uh, and uh, as explorations go, I hope we might be able to check in a year time or so whether this was right or wrong. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, Luciano. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, that brings us very close to the end of this uh, intensely interesting opening session. I take away from it uh, two, two themes, as it were. One which would be, which I think both Ravi and Luciano have emphasized, linking principles to practice. And the other, which I think Lucilla spoke to very eloquently, which is adaptive regulation. And it's interesting that adaptive regulation, as it emerges as a practice in the European legislative space, starts with what Luciano has mentioned, which is monitoring and auditing, gathering information from praxis, from piloting. And then what we need is expert but open deliberation, enabling any rulemaking to be kept up to speed. And I think that we see there a, a much shorter cycle time if we want to be efficient in framing as a society artificial intelligence or any in innovation, we have to be able to move faster. And as one of my last commissioners, Gunter Oettinger, said, you know, we're not yet legislating in Europe at the speed of the digital age. And I think that remains a challenge. So no pressure on Lucilla and Dragos and Eva as, as co-creators uh, of our next generation rules. But I think the message then 
is that if practice is the key and culture, ethics and values must drive our practice as well as compliance, everybody is involved. And that takes me back to my very first point, which is open deliberation will keep us ahead as a European society in innovating the best in class AI. And I think that's why we have the sectoral specificity, which will take us through the next two days. So thanks to our panelists. And ladies and gentlemen, you now have, I think, about 20 minutes before we move to the first of the uh, breakout sessions on sectoral detail. And as I said right at the beginning, watch out for the publication. Um, some of the committees have finished their reports today, others will finish them into the new year and the full compilation comes in February. So thank you very much and see you in the next session. Thank you.